turnout. Um, and we're so happy to welcome uh, Mark Hansel here from the uh, US FBA. And from the State Treasurer's Office, we have Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Steve Spindler. And uh, Steve drove all the way up from Columbus, so I'm glad he came today when the roads were a little better. Um, and uh, please, please, let us know what kind of programs you're interested in by filling out your evaluation forms when this is all done. Uh, each one of them has PowerPoint presentation, and they will allow us for some time for some questions and answers. Okay? <coughs> Great. Shall we take it away? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, a couple mics in there. Oh, okay. It's alive. Okay. <laughs> Is that reasonably well? Okay, very good. I'm not used to broadcasting, but I have a face for radio. Anyway, uh, I'm Mark Hansel with the Cleveland Office of the SBA, and I'd like to thank Ellen for inviting me here this evening, along with Steve Spittler from the Treasurer's Office of the State of Ohio, uh, to make a little presentation, and, and I'm going to talk about uh, the Small Business Administration, the United States Small Business Administration. And Steve will talk about uh, a program through the state of Ohio, the treasurer's office there. Uh, the United States Small Business Administration, we're an independent federal agency. Uh, we've got maybe 3,000 employees nationwide. And uh, we're known primarily for our loan guarantee program. We guarantee loans made by banks to eligible small businesses. Uh, we're not a direct lender. Uh, frequently, I'll get calls uh, in the office, and people will say, can I come in and fill out an application? And I'll politely decline that and say, well, I really can't help you. It's really a bank-driven process, and you need to go to the bank and submit an application there. Uh, most banks in our area are active with the SBA. Uh, Huntington happens to be in the lead. Uh, they were in the lead in fiscal year 2008. Uh, they're in the lead so far this year as well. Are we getting feedback on this today? Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, most of the banks are active. Huntington, as I mentioned, happens to be in the lead. Uh, but National City, now PNC, uh, U.S. Bank, First Merit, uh, they're very active with us as well. Uh, the typical process, apply to the bank. Uh, many of the very active SBA lenders like U.S. Bank and Huntington have SBA dedicated personnel already on staff and as part of the underwriting department. What normally happens is that your loan application would go through the underwriting process and if it doesn't pass, measure, uh, pass muster, uh, that is to say they can't do the deal on a conventional basis, they'll take it over to their SBA staff and say, hey, can you look at this and consider this under an SBA guarantee? And the bank, if they decide to do that, will get back to you and say, can't do your deal conventionally. However, with an SBA guarantee, we will go ahead and do the deal. If you submit an application to the bank, and, and I tell this frequently to people in loan information meetings, if they decline your offer, find out why they decline your offer. If it's a matter of uh, insufficient equity, that is to say your own money going into the deal, and this is especially true with startups, uh, then you're going to have to raise some additional equity if you want to get the deal done. What you might consider at that point would be to find a friendly investor, maybe a family member who can uh, inject money into your business, or find a partner to go into the business with you. But find out why, just don't say, oh, I've been declined and that's it. Because some of those problems might be able to be resolved. 
uh, likely SBA situations. Uh, about a third of what we do on an annual basis would be classified as startup or change of ownership. Uh, startups, they could be, uh, you know, pure startups, that is to say, hey, I want to get hold of a Subway uh, franchise and I haven't been in business before. We do those. Or they could be change of ownerships where you know someone who's selling a business and you want to buy it from them. Collateral shortfalls, uh, this is especially true, even if you had an existing business and you decided to open another location, but you're doing a lot of leasehold improvements, leasehold improvements translate into zero collateral value from the lender's perspective. Consequently, banks will come to us and say, do this because we have a collateral shortfall and our loan policy won't permit, uh, permit us to do this conventionally. Turnaround situations. I, I don't see too many of these these days, uh, but uh, frequently uh, if, if a bank sees that a borrower is getting into trouble, uh, many times they invite that borrower to leave the bank and find another relationship. And consequently, uh, if you find a receptive lender, a new bank, who's willing to take on the deal, and they see merit in your proposal, then what they'll do is reach for an SBA guarantee to give them some additional assurance in the deal. A turnaround situation, in other words. Eligibility. Yeah, we're the Small Business Administration, so your business must qualify as being small. But we have different ways of defining small and it really depends on what industry class you're in. If you're in uh, retail, chances are we're going to go by annual business receipts, annual sales. But if you're in wholesale, we'll go by full-time employment. And likewise for manufacturing, we'll go by full-time employment. So we have different ways of judging what's small. If you're in manufacturing, you might have as many as a thousand full-time employees and still be considered small. If you're in retail, it's probably six and a half million dollars in revenue a year, and that makes you small. The borrowers, that is to say the, the principals of the company, need to have good character. How do we define good character? Well, in the world of SBA, it's usually lack of arrest record. You know, no convictions, no felonies, things like that. So that's how we define good character. Credit, credit's an issue, more so with the bank underwriting process and the reliance on credit scores. In the world of SBA, we say you'll have satisfactory credit if you haven't defaulted on a federally uh, uh, guaranteed debt. That is to say, if you haven't defaulted on any, any student loans, VA, FHA mortgages, or anything like that. That's in the world of SBA. It's different in the world of banking because they're relying more on credit score. The owners of the business, at least 51%, must be US citizens or lawful permanent residents. Lawful permanent residents. And uh, if, if the owners are lawful permanent residents, so we do need some certification from what used to be immigration and naturalization for that. But we can make loans to companies that are not owned by US citizens. However, they must be lawful permanent residents. Uh, arm's length transaction. That is to say the deal itself must be arm's length. But, uh, if you have um, an individual with multiple companies and he wants to convey assets to another company and finance that conveyance, we would consider that to be not arm's length. All right? So it, it must be an arm's length transaction and not you know, someone simply shifting assets around to themselves. Types of business. We deal with for-profit businesses. We can't do not-for-profits. We can't do not-for-profits. The businesses themselves need to be active, not passive. In other words, if you wanted to uh, go out and buy a mini storage facility and lease out the spaces, we wouldn't do that deal. 
because we would consider that to be passive investment, not active investment. You need to uh, occupy and use the assets that are being financed. There are some categories of business we simply don't do, like gambling for one, and there are a few others. Uh, guarantee fees. And before I mention guarantee fees, if anybody has a question at any time, just sing out and we'll try to deal with it here and now. Uh, guarantee fees. Yeah, we do charge a guarantee fee on the loan. It's usually passed along to the borrower. It's up to the bank to convey those funds to the SBA. But it's based on the guaranteed amount. We have a graduated scale. And it's two to three and a half percent. Two percent on loans up to 150. 150 to 700, it's three percent. Anything over 700,000 is three and a half percent. On our maximum size SBA guaranteed loan of $2 million, uh, the guarantee will run you approximately $60,000. And normally banks will fold in the guarantee fee with the loan amount. In other words, it'll be financed. Interest rates, we're really not a low interest program. We're more capital access. We have usual limits of prime plus two and a quarter to prime plus 2.75%, depending on the term of the loan. Now those are ceilings, all right? In other words, we say to the lenders, you can't go beyond these ceilings. You can operate below those ceilings, but just don't go beyond them. And the banks are free to fix or float the, the rate of the loan. Uh, the agency has, has run into some problems lately. Uh, that is to say, our loan volume has really dropped. And one of the reasons given to the agency by the banking community was, look, you guys, instead of pricing loans off Prime, the Wall Street Journal Prime, why don't you let us, the lenders, use LIBOR, the Lunder, London Interbank Offered Rate. And so within the last couple of months, the agency changed policy, and we've enabled lenders to use LIBOR as the benchmark as opposed to the Wall Street Journal Prime. And the hope there is that the LIBOR pricing, plus a few other things that we've done, will revive the secondary market. Because a lot of lenders will make an SBA guaranteed loan and sell the, the guaranteed portion into the secondary market. The secondary market has kind of collapsed for SBA loans. And uh, LIBOR pricing and a program by the Federal Reserve called uh, TALF, it's kind of like the equivalent of TARP, but it's called TALF, uh, we're hoping that those revive the secondary market and get more lenders uh, more active in our program now. Interest rates, uh, they can be higher under a program we call the Express. We, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about Express later, but Express is a very important product as far as the SBA is concerned. Okay, question? <laughs> yes, but, okay, the problem with, with refinancing an SBA debt is that we've erected a number of hurdles that kind of uh, restrict refinancing. Now, if your bank sold that loan onto the secondary market originally, that's a legitimate excuse for you to go to another bank and get it refinanced there. And then that other bank could use uh, the LIBOR rate on that. So there are some hurdles there to jump through. Yes? We, we're using what's called the 30-day average. And I'm not sure what that is, but it's the 30-day average LIBOR. No, uh, give me your card and, and I'll shoot you an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's a good point. Uh, other questions? Okay, uh, credit policy. The SBA is looking for repayment ability. In other words, we're not collateral lenders. Yeah, we take collateral or we tell our lenders to take collateral, 
but we don't base our decision solely on collateral that's offered. Repayment ability. Okay, well, that can be based on historic earnings or projected earnings. Certainly if you're dealing with a startup situation or a turnaround situation, you need a reasonable set of projections, something to demonstrate that yes, you can repay the debt. And the reasonable projections, what, what the bank will ask for will be the assumptions behind the projections. Are they realistic? But SBA will go with projected earnings as a source of repayment as opposed to historic earnings. Uh, collateral policy, usually it's take off. Uh, under our regular loan guarantee program, what we tell the banks to do is uh, if the business assets don't secure the loan on a discounted basis, then look at personal assets. And if you looked at personal assets, but let's suppose the owners, um, they've mortgaged up their residence, there's no uh, collateral value there, we'll tell the bank that's fine. You've looked at all the useful assets, but there's, there's nothing there. We'll just be short on the collateral package. In other words, the bank is free to go ahead and make the loan based on cash flow as opposed to being abundantly collateralized. Which is why I say we may fall short in those situations. Uh, collateral policies can be re relaxed under Express. Express is one of our products. We guarantee the loans made by the bank. Usually we guarantee 50%. And uh, we allow unsecured loans for $25,000 and less. And if it's, the if it's consistent with the bank policy, they can even go higher, perhaps up to $150,000 unsecured. So uh, we do allow more latitude under our express program than we do under regular 7A. Uh, who guarantees typically an SBA loan? Anyone with 20% or more ownership in the business. 20% or more ownership means you're a principal of the business and you should guarantee. Perhaps under 20%. For example, if the president of the company owns 15%, well, we'll look for him to guarantee because he, he's a key individual. But ordinarily, 20% is the cutoff. Loan uses and terms. These are um, maximums that SBA will allow lenders to do. All right. This isn't to say that the uh, lender will actually go along with this, but we can do term working capital including lines of credit out to seven years. Uh, we can do equipment, as long as the use life is there, out to 15 years. And we can do real estate out to 25 years. And uh, if you have a loan request with multiple uses, it's based on a weighted average. You know, how much money is going to work in capital? How much money is going to equipment? How much money is going to real estate? And so you get a weighted average that way as far as term is concerned. Uh, one thing we don't allow, um, we, we tell the lenders, look, if, if you're going to do a 10-year loan, then you know, it, it's got to be a genuine 10 years. Uh, we don't want uh, you know, a 10-year amortization schedule with a five-year balloon. We don't like balloons. So you know, we want the term and the amortization schedule to, uh, to match up. Now, hmm, the Express, I guess you were waiting for this. Uh, uh, a year ago or thereabouts, uh, just so I can deal in round numbers, uh, the agency nationwide did about 100,000 loans, uh, about maybe $20 billion worth of finance, and I'm talking about 07. Uh, probably three quarters of those loans that were done were under the Express program. And I bring this to your attention because Express has been a product, a loan guarantee product that has really driven our portfolio. Uh, Express is real user friendly for, as far as the lenders are concerned because the lenders make the credit decision. Uh, the lenders close the loan on their own documents. Uh, the lenders have pretty much uh, not entirely total control, but near total control over the loan. 
and consequently Express has been a real uh, hot item as far as product goes with the SBA. And we have different types of Express. We have regular, patriot, and community, right? And the one that gets the most play is regular Express. We'll do loans of up to $350,000. They can be a term, a line, or both, if, if you need both. We'll guarantee 50% of the loan. We'll allow the bank to, uh, again, make the credit decision and uh, just submit electronically to the agency a little bit of information and the agency responds usually instantaneously with a loan number and then the loan is done it's uh, it's just available to be booked at that time so consequently express has received a lot of play if you happen to be a veteran or your active duty in transition, you can qualify for Patriot Express. And it's just like regular Express, except for a couple of items. Number one, you can go up to $500,000. And number two, we offer a more generous guarantee to the lender. We'll do 50% or 75% or 85% as far as the guarantee goes on the uh, Patriot Express. Community Express uh, hasn't seen much play. It, it's currently being revised. And uh, as soon as uh, headquarters makes uh, the needed changes there, we'll uh, promote that a little bit more than we do at the present time. Uh, when I say that loan limits vary, well, again, Patriot Express, 500000 Regular Express, $350,000. That's what I mean there. Now, a word about five. Yeah, shoot. I have a question. On the previous slide, you mentioned that mm -hmm. the, uh, under the express, the collateral uh, policy may be relaxed. Yes, because we want the, the bank to treat the express loan like it would a similar loan that it was doing without the SBA. So if bank policy would say, well, we do everything unsecured $50,000 and less, then that would be consistent with their policy. So we kind of defer to bank policy under the express program. Yeah. Yes, shoot. Um, <coughs> on the lines? Yeah. So the origination fee, is that based on what the amount of the line is? No, it would actually be based on the guaranteed portion of the line. In other words, if you had a $100,000 express line with a 50% guarantee, the guarantee fee would be 2% on $50,000. Right. And I think you might be asking the question because you may not draw the line, but you're still going to pay a guarantee fee. Yeah, you will. So Up front or just it adds into your balance of your line that you can start paying off? No, you'd have to pay that up front. And actually, you could draw on the line to pay the fee. But the fee is due 90 days from approval by the SBA. And it, it used to be that the SBA was... Uh, well, shall, how shall I say this? Our loan programs were subsidized by the, uh, the Congress. In other words, they appropriated funds. That's no longer the case. Uh, you know, they expect us to pay our own way, basically through guarantee fees. Uh, the only money that Congress appropriates to the agency is to pay uh, operating expenses like uh, rent and salaries and travel, things like that. So our loan guarantee programs stand on their own at this point. Uh, anybody in business already? A lot of people are in business already. Anybody thinking about buying a building? Thinking about buying a building? How much? Any idea what it might cost? Pay your pardon? 350. Okay, 350 is large enough to go through 504. Anybody familiar with 504 program? Did you use it? Good. Good. Well, you can tell him about the virtues of 504. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 20-25% equity, that is to say down payment on the property. 50-40-10 uh, is the usual split for 504. This gentleman wants to buy a building. Perhaps he doesn't have the 20% down. He goes to Liberty Bank. Liberty Bank says, well, 
you know, okay, let's let's try 504. And they might contact uh, Bob Flipiak at Cascade or John Kropp up at uh, Growth Capital and put together a 504 package. At the end of the day, he's going to end up with his building plus two loans. He's going to end up with a, a senior mortgage loan from Liberty, and he's going to end up with a junior mortgage loan that's guaranteed by the SBA, but it's through a certified development company, a CDC. And Liberty might say, well, we're comfortable in going 15 years on this term. 504 will go 20. Liberty might say, well, we don't want to be in this for more than 10 years, and that's fine, but 504 will still go 20. So he gets the benefit of a longer repayment term on the 504 side. 504 rates have been crazy lately, but generally they are close to the 10-year treasury, and they haven't been that bad. But 504 is a really a good uh, product as far as real estate goes, real estate acquisition, whether it's acquiring an existing building or putting up a new building. Uh, there is no prevailing wage requirement attached to 504. Uh, you can do just machinery and equipment, assuming that the machinery and equipment has a, a use life of 10 years. Uh, but you can use 504 for that as well. So it's a good product. It's kind of a niche product. I mean, we might do 100,000 regular guaranteed loans and maybe 9,000, 10,000, 504 loans a year nationwide. So uh, we don't get that much play, but it's a great product to use there. Anything else you'd like to offer on that? Well, it's really good for construction loans, too. If you're mm -hmm. looking to put up a new facility, the, the lender, if they get a commitment to do the uh, construction loan, they can get that loan for the Yeah, yeah, 504 is, is a pretty good product. And, and he mentioned that uh, it, when it's funded, because the bank needs to do the interim financing, why is that? The source of 504 funds are Wall Street. You know, every month the agency gathers together all 504 debentures nationwide and takes them to market. So uh, you need the interim lender involved there in a 504 situation. SBA Resources, uh, that's our main site, www.sba.gov. Uh, there's my contact information over the internet, and you can give me a call as well. Yes? Right. You can, uh, lenders can do lines and they can do term loans. Uh, and, and sometimes lenders will give you both. Uh, I won't mention any names, but there was one lender that made a great splash in the market a few, uh, few years back. And uh, you know, that was their standard mode of operation. Here's, here's your uh, you know, $50,000 term loan for whatever purpose, and here's your $25,000 line even though you may not need a $25,000 line. So you'd come out with two SBA loans in that situation. But yeah, the beauty of Express is, is that you can do lines of credit. Years ago, the agency didn't do lines of credit at all. Uh, but with Express, uh, we have. And I don't know how many lines are in the Express portfolio. I guess one of these days we'll find out. It, if you're an existing business, uh, I, I'm going to presume there's equity in your company, in which case you would not need to make an additional equity in, injection. In other words, okay, you, you've got a business, it's sufficiently capitalized, and you need a larger line of credit, okay? The, the agency isn't going to tell the lender, make the borrower inject additional equity into his company. It's simply, does the, the borrower need that size line of credit? So, it, it, am I answering that correctly? Not really. Okay. 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 
the business increased 25% last year. Right. But there's existing debt that the profits are being applied to. It's really us for sort of investing for additional advertising and growth in the company. Right. What opportunities do we have as we gain enough for that future growth company based on the new track? Okay. Uh, two things here. I mean, the equity, equity in the real estate, I mean, I would put that aside and it would simply be an issue of do you need a larger line of credit or do you need, you know, you've got an existing line, I take it? No. Okay. And I would just simply go to the bank and, and regardless of the uh, real estate situation, I mean, because the, the operating company itself, and I don't know whether the real estate company is, or real estate is held in the corporate name or separately, but I mean, if there's equity in your existing business and you need the larger line, then it ought to be granted. So. Not getting there. Okay, <laughs> well give, give me a call and we'll talk about that tomorrow, okay? Or send me an email, one or the other, yeah. That seems odd. Uh, I, I was talking, uh, I was in Worcester uh, earlier today, and I, I sat down with a lender who said that uh, uh, another lender kind of bailed out halfway in a situation, but uh, I don't think the SBA approved that loan at this point. Okay, and so I don't know whether you're dealing with a similar type situation where the lender, before getting the SBA guarantee, backed out of the deal. Uh, a lot of uh, lenders, non-bank lenders, have kind of retreated from SBA because of the uh, uh, collapse of the secondary market, uh, like GE Credit and Temecula Valley Bank uh, being a couple of those. Uh, it could be a situation like that, but I mean, the SBA doesn't cancel a loan guarantee unless the lender asks us to uh, uh, cancel the loan. So, but uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, there there's money to be lent, but uh, you've got. Uh, really kind of a, a, a nasty situation out there. Uh, higher lending standards, number one. And number two, fewer deals coming through the door. And a number of banks uh, just kind of out looking for deposits and uh, dressing up the portfolio as it exists, trying to get rid of uh, what they might perceive to be problem loans. And uh, so it, it's really kind of a rough situation out there at this point. Yeah, there, there are loans to be made, but uh, banks are being very selective, I would say. Yes, sir. Would you current bank rather offer you a traditional line of credit or traditional product than an SBA loan? It could be. In fact, another conversation I had with a separate lender down in Worcester was, uh, uh, Actually, I was talking to an economic developer and a fellow wanted to open a bike shop. Uh, and uh, he said he went to the bank and rather than get a business loan, he got a home equity line of credit. And well, okay, it gets the deal done. But the bank uh, could have easily done a, uh, uh, an express guarantee line of credit. So I, I, to the bank's best interest, they make more money off the traditional product than SBA. Uh, the, the pricing, maybe, I, I don't know, you know. Don't know. Is it, uh, I've got a couple of them. Is it mm -hmm. best to uh, apply to the, to the bank that you have your current line of credit, or do you suggest shopping them out? I think just about everyone shops these days, but I would go to the incumbent bank. Okay. Yeah. What, what's usually the time to do from applications to the decision? <sighs> With respect to the Express product, yeah, I mean, um, that can be done very quickly. Uh, because, uh, you know, the bank will gather whatever the documentation, which is minimal in that case, and then, uh, you know, email the SBA uh, the pertinent information and details, and usually the, the loan number bounces back within a few seconds, 
in those situations. But it's getting the bank, the bank's underwriters, what they need prior to SBA acting. If a bank submits a regular SBA package uh, for the regular 7A guaranteed loan, which only accounts for about 10% of our volume these days, it might take you a week to get an approval out of an SBA underwriter. Uh, an SBA employee probably owned, underwrites, handles only one out of 10 SBA loans these days. So uh, we've entrusted most of the underwriting to our lenders at this point. Do you know about being able to um, occur pulling over an existing line of credit and you will hire capital SBA loan? Sure. Yeah, we, we allow, I, I mean, even uh, Express I mean, uh, the stipulation uh, with the Express is that uh, the bank needs to demonstrate that the borrower needs uh, a larger line of credit, and they can go back in and redo the Express loan and come up with a larger one like that. So, and also under Express, well, if the bank has a conventional line out to you, like 100,000, and for whatever reason you need an additional 50, they can keep the 100 in place and do the 50 through SBA if they want to. Yeah. Uh, Sure. What's the minimum that the banks will usually want to deal with? You know, I've seen First Merit do express loans for $10,000. And I mean, I, I just happened to be aware of that because I was peeking into their files. You know, but uh, uh, I, I don't know about the others. I've heard the others saying, well, we don't do anything under 20000 you know, and consider it a business loan. And then um, if you were to do something small like that, mm -hmm. and then reapply for a higher line later, do you pay just the delta in the origination fee at that point, or do you start over and start from scratch? If they uh, cancel out the, the existing line then and you go to the higher line, then you'll pay a new guarantee fee at that point based upon the new amount, okay? But if it's uh, just like bumping up an existing line by maybe 30%, then you'll just pay the guarantee difference on that. Yes, sir. Credit score. Uh, you know, uh, one of the underwriters told me yesterday. You know, 720 is what 680 used to be. Okay, maybe that's kind of a flip answer, but in other words, they they are relying on credit scores. They are looking at that in the underwriting process. And um, again, uh, the, the bar has, set, has been set higher there. Um, so, don't know. Yes, other questions? Good. All right, uh, well, I'll, yeah. No fifth third participates? Yeah, fifth third is a, an active SBA lender as well. They, they are PLP, preferred lender, and they have the express uh, lending authority as well. Um, so yeah, Fifth Third is, is one of our uh, active lenders there. Yes, sir. If I heard what you said correctly. Mm -hmm. Basically now, it's even harder to get an SBA loan. Well, I think it's harder to get uh, financing in general, and SBA would go along with that. Yeah. So the, like I say, the credit standards have tightened all across the board. Okay, well, very good. I'll remain here, and obviously you can get in touch with me at the Cleveland District Office. And now I'll turn the program over to, uh, to Steve. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Steve Spittler. I'm not Amanda Hoyt <laughs> um, from the State Treasurer's Office. She recently left our, our office. Um, uh, but um, under the new administration, um, I am working in the Investments Department. My title is Portfolio Analyst uh, for newly uh, appointed Treasurer Kevin L. Boyce. Um, he was actually just inaugurated uh, a day ago. Um, and I'm here to talk about the Grow Now program. Um, a lot of you may have heard, or some of you may have heard about it, uh, referred to as the Small Business Link Deposit Program. Um, I'm sure um, some bankers would know about that. Uh, we rebranded it in January of 07, and since then we've really amped up uh, participation in this program. Um, what it is, is it's, um, oh, get one of these. 
it's a, a more affordable path for uh, small business borrowing. Um, it's a partnership between the treasury and the banks and uh, of course the of course the small business that's going to be borrowing. Uh, the purpose is to allow the banks to um, to do what they're best at, um, which is make more credit decisions um, by reducing their interest rate, um, by reducing the, the business's interest rate by 3%. Um, and uh, that translates if you have our, our maximum amount of our loans, um, or our funding, I should say, because uh, we actually do not, just like the SBA, we do not give the loans. Uh, the bank makes those decisions, at which point we invest a CD, a two-year CD, in the bank. Um, and they pass along the savings to uh, you, the, uh, the business. And uh, $400,000 is the maximum amount of funding that we give. Um, and that translates over a two-year period to up to $24,000 in savings, which is pretty considerable. Um, and again, it allows everybody to do what they're best at. Um, the bank makes better, uh, more credit decisions that they otherwise maybe wouldn't um, because of the, re the reduction in interest rate. Uh, the small business can grow jobs, and that's why, hence the name Grow Now. Um, and of course, the Treasury invests uh, in, in Ohio, and we leverage that investment um, in businesses that are creating or saving jobs. Uh, that's the key to this program. Um, let's see here. Did I skip? Okay. Uh, obviously, I just said, what's the purpose? Keep jobs in Ohio. Um, yes. Uh, actually, it is renewal, renewable uh, right now, but it is contingent on um, additional creation. Um, so you can actually get this reduction uh, if you're even saving jobs at the, at the current moment. But as it, when it comes to a renew in two years, we're going to be a little bit more we're more likely to give it to it. Right now, we have plenty of funding, but uh, in two years' time, we might have a little bit less. And uh, we will give preference to those who haven't been participant in it before. But uh, yes, it is renewable uh, at the present time. Um, uh, yes, um, it after actually uh, it's renewable uh, just the one time. Theoretically, you could actually participate in Grow Now in eight out of ten years because in after your two-year period, you can renew it, um, assuming you're creating or retaining even more jobs. And it's uh, I'll get to the specifications in a minute um, as to how much you qualify for based on how many jobs you're creating or saving. Um, but after two years, yes, you can renew it possibly, and uh, then we ask that you sit out for two years, and then again you can do two and two. So. Theoretically, eight out of ten years, you could be, you could have an interest rate reduction. Um, so the purpose um, is to keep jobs in Ohio. And uh, here's a great example. Here's Salina Tent Company, and uh, they were they started as just a mom and a son, and they made uh, they they bought some tents, a few tents, and uh, worked out of their garage, and uh, set up tents for you know small parties, uh, graduation parties, um, birthday parties, and. Um, with the help of the Grow Now program, um, they were able to take on a little bit more debt, or uh, finance a little bit more debt than they otherwise would have been able to. And uh, as a result, they were able to grow, as you can see. Um, and they actually received a federal contract for disaster relief um, after the uh, unfortunate um, Hurricane Katrina on the Gulf Coast. And uh, they've, grown, they've grown quite a bit. And this is one of our, uh, as we call them, link stars. Uh, and there's more where that came from, actually, the website uh, grownow.ohio.gov um, is it's a it's a great website and you can see all the various link stars and you'll see it in the brochure that I have um, I don't have nearly as much uh, literature um, uh, and that's a that's actually um, a result of the change in administration but um, but we have more <laughs> we have more coming um, and. And yes, it's uh, you can you can see all the various um, businesses that are able to participate: um, manufacturing, um, construction, uh, and we'll see. Uh, you, we'll see that you can just about any business is really is really uh, eligible for this as long as they're saving or creating jobs. Um, and then here are the sort of rigid. Um, Things that we can't really bend on, you know. We try to do case by case basis, and uh, but here are, the, here are the things that we're sort of legislatively locked into. Um, the the business must have less than 150 employees, majority of which must be Ohio residents, organized for profit, 
offices and operating facilities in Ohio. Uh, there's one caveat to that. Um, if in the event that you're, you know, we, I, I'm actually from uh, the Toledo area, and we had a couple businesses um, that had a facility in Toledo, and they uh, had a sales office in um, southeast Michigan, and they only had two people there. As long as it's um, less than five and no more than 20% of your, of your staff is in another state, then that's okay. Um, and then again, the main thing is are they creating or saving jobs? Is the business creating and saving jobs? And this is what I'm talking about. How much can you qualify for? For every full-time job that you're affecting, be it saved or created, you qualify for up to $50,000 in funding. So, and that means you, you actually get a loan with your bank first. So say you have a $200,000 loan and you're, create, and you're creating or saving four jobs. Well, then we can reduce the interest rate on that entire 200,000 amount. Again, $400,000 is the is the limit, so that's eight full-time equivalent jobs. And uh, if they're part-time positions, then we just split we just cut it in half, so a part-time would fund 25,000. So, again, 3% on 400,000 over 2 years, 24,000. And what can grow now finance? Um, Really, uh, it, can, it, it, it can finance just about anything as long as the borrowing entity is the same as the entity creating or saving the jobs. What that, what that means, um, we don't work with holding companies usually. Um, we, um, not usually, we, we, we cannot. The, um, they can be a guarantor on the loan, but we don't co-borrow. The name of the loan must be in the operating entity, the business that's saving or creating the jobs. Uh, do we have any questions at this point? Yes. Is it only loans or is it also lines of credit? It is actually only term loans. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, if you have an existing line of credit, uh, if your bank is willing to set that um, for the two-year period, then that's okay. And if it's a variable, a floating rate as well, um, it, it also it needs to be set for the two years. But um, after, the, after the two years, they can, it can go back to whatever you had agreed upon with your bank. Yes. Um, the definition, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, if you can make the case that without this loan or without the interest rate reduction, you would have to eliminate these jobs. And we have a compliance piece. Uh, a year after you receive this, we, we're going to want to see your payroll um, and some of your numbers. And, um, you know, are, are you still, do you still have these people you said you would save? Or, have, or in the case of creating, you know, has your payroll gone from 8 to 12? like you said it would. Um, and that's basically, that's our definition. <laughs> um, anybody else? Okay. And again, the only time uh, the loan, or the, the, this program is not a good fit is with uh, withholding companies. Um, we understand that it's a good tax benefit um, for, certain, for certain businesses to have, the, to have control of it um, and you know, for liability coverage. And uh, we wouldn't recommend switching just to participate in this program. That's something that you and your CPA need to talk about. But, um, And then what's an allowable loan? Um, like I said, uh, no lines of credit and a non-changing rate for the period of the deposit. Um, Again, that can be a it can be a floating prime rate coming in, and and this also I, I don't know if I said this it can be a, a new loan or an existing loan we can refinance that's fine. Um, if it is a variable rate, then we just ask that for the two year deposit it must be fixed, and we will reduce that rate by three percent. And uh, how much is available? It's uh, about a million dollars per business day. Um, we came in um, in '07 with the program in sort of disuse, um, and that, that, wasn't a, that was just an administrative priority change. Um, and it was at about, I want to say, $30 million was, on, was the only thing in use. We actually just last month hit $300 million, and that's at the two-year period. So we're on pace to, uh, to uh, get to our maximum amount. So that's $20 million a month, and we're, we're hitting that pretty consistently right now. One little graphic. And how do you use the Grow Now? Um, well, Mark can probably attest that uh, the, the SBA loan, um, I'm sure that uh, he, he sees people that also are recipients um, 
of the Grown Out program. Um, I'm actually somebody who goes through the approvals um, every, you know, they come in through uh, through our website, and I, I, I get to get a chance to get to know the business by looking at their application. And uh, a lot of times we ask, one of the questions we'll ask is, um, just out of our own curiosity and for our own um, data, we'll say, you know, are you, are you currently receiving any other governmental um, are you participating in another program? And we do see quite a few SBA uh, participants, and it's, it's sort of a no-brainer. If the interest rate's high and you're saving or creating the jobs, why not? And it's it's worth the uh, it's worth the it's worth the application because it is extremely easy. Um, it takes 15, 20 minutes to fill out the application, and and a turnaround time is really fast. Um, and then, of course, Ohio Department of Development tax abatements, tax credits, incentives, um, and in certain cases, I know that. Um, I believe Cuyahoga County, and I know for a fact Lucas County, um, being that's where I'm from, they, the, that particular county treasurer, Wade Kapsikevich, he has a, uh, a county link deposit program. And uh, so our, our ceiling is $400,000 for funding. And just for example, his is 100, uh, 150000 And um, you know, so if, there's a, if it's a bigger loan that you're looking for, then uh, we can actually reduce the interest rate on even more. So you know, we encourage piggybacking with as many programs as possible. Okay, and how does it work? Well, the, the bank approves the loan. Um, you, you and your bank are, the, the bank is the one that's making all the credit decisions. We're not looking at your, you know, your credit history or anything like that or your background. Bank, uh, we, we, we depend on the bank to do that. Um, and uh, at, at which point, once you've decided on the, the terms of the loan and the interest rate, you come to our website, which is grow now, again, grownow.ohio.gov, and you apply for the rate reduction. Um, if approved, we place a CD in the, the bank for the amount of the loan at a 3% rate reduction, and the bank passes that along to you, the business owner. And uh, again, <laughs> up to $24,000 over two years. And how do you know if your bank's eligible? Well, we have, again, the, the website grownow.ohio.gov is, uh, is, is pretty uh, simple to uh, navigate. And uh, there is a eligible lender um, map, as you can see. Um, we'll get the picture of Rich changed to Kevin Boyce soon, I swear. <laughs> uh, the, you just click on your county, and you can look at all of the state depositories. That's one thing I hadn't mentioned. Yes, sir. Uh, it depends on the size of the bank. Um, certain certain um, larger banks aren't participating in it, and that's sort of something that we've been working on. Um, I'm, I don't want to name any specific um, banks, but uh, just because of the way that they they see their bottom lines, they it's not in the interest of a, a lender in certain areas of the state, unfortunately, to participate in this program. But the small, uh, actually, the ones that we see the most are the, the community banks, more so than you know your your Fifth Thirds or your Huntingtons or your Charters. Um, but as long as they're a state depository, they are they are eligible. So that that means no credit unions, um, unfortunately, no agricultural. Um, lending institutions, um, just anything that's FDIC insured, basically, but also a state depository. Did I answer that question? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, it's, uh, you know, it depends, like I said, it depends on the bank and, um, and of course, the, you know, the viability of the business. Um, but I would say a lot of them are coming in um, at about six and a half percent to maybe like nine. Uh, not, if we see anything over nine, we're going to ask the bank, why is it so high? And you know, it, it might be because it's, it's more of a risk. Um, but you know, after the rate reduction, it's you know, six percent. So. And uh, you know, how does the program help banks? Um, it, you know, it gives them a deposit they might not, might not otherwise have. Um, it counts towards their CRA hours and, and dollars. And uh, you know, there's a better chance of getting paid back if if there's the rate reduction, which is an incentive for the bank to participate. Um, it's it's a great marketing tool. Um, it, it really is easy. It's cost efficient. It uh, you know, 
you know, we say not heavy-handed government. Um, you know, there's the negative stereotype that uh, you know the speed of government is a, is a slow speed. Uh, we we actually boast 48-hour turnaround time. Um, once you and your your bank decide on the loan, you will know from us very soon whether or not uh, the rate reduction can apply. And then again, who are who are some more recipients? Here's Lori's Naturescape uh, in Van Wert, Ohio. I had the the pleasure of actually coming to uh, Lori's, and it's it's a really great place. And uh, as you know, it's it's great to see that uh, uh, basically again it was just Lori and her husband who were who were working this greenhouse, um, and they were able to hire some family members and some other members in their community, and um, and they were also also able to take advantage of our Ag Link deposit agricultural link deposit program, which um, that is unlike the grown out program, which is a rolling application process. You can apply any time, and the funds are there. Trust me. Um, the Ag Link is a once a year um, program, and that is not uh, exclusive to to state depositories. I don't know if this really applies in this part of Ohio, but I thought I'd mention it. And if there's any questions on Ag Link, I can I can talk more about that. Um, and then some other past recipients. You know, there's some pretty uh, pretty noticeable um, logos right there. I mean, Donato's Pizza, Mitty's Pizza, Mitty's Spaghetti Sauce, Court Camera Velvet. And um, you know th these are all businesses that uh, took advantage of Grow Now, and uh, we're not going to take credit. <laughs> I mean, it, it also takes entrepreneurial, you know, ingenuity above all. But uh, it, it helps a business that uh, would be otherwise a little strapped for cash. You know, take on some more debt and uh, and help the business grow. And that's that's what we want to see. Um, and then let's see, what's your first step again? You want to go to the website, and uh, again, the Treasury will take no more than 48 hours to notify the bank. And at which point, you know, once once we go with uh, once we once the funding goes through, uh, you'll you'll receive a a letter as well as the bank, and um, it, it's really a painless process. And um, I would take advantage of it. <laughs> And uh, currently, our investment coordinator is Tara Brown. Um, but you can also, um, I, have, I didn't have as many cards um, as I'd like to have brought, um, just running out of them, getting more printed up. Um, but if you need my contact information, if, as you can see, Tara Brown's is Tara.Brown. Mine's just Stephen with a V dot Spitler, S-P-I-T-L-E-R at T-O-S. Dot Ohio dot gov, and you can reach me at that same number. Would you uh, say that louder again? Yes. Um, Stephen dot Spitler, S P I T L E R, at T O S for Treasurer of State dot Ohio dot G O V. And yeah, feel free to call me at any time because you know, we get, that's the prime reason we're working is to get this program uh, firing on all cylinders and uh, funding as many businesses as we can, especially in these times. Is that Ag Link program for agricultural companies? Same concept though? Uh, it's the same concept for the most part. It's only for farms in Ohio and it's uh, for feed seed fertilizer operating costs. Equipment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's up to four percent rate reduction, uh, depending on how what the interest rate of that you know ag credit, for instance, is is one that we work with quite a bit. And um, yes. Um, falling under the ag credit, yes. Or I'm sorry, yeah, Ag Link. Yes, absolutely. That that's actually Lori's Naturescape that I showed you. She wasn't actually a farmer, but it was agricultural related. What's the term on that? What's the length? That's a one year. One year. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that is a very that's much more competitive. Um, in that program, we only have a hundred million dollars, um, and that the, those hundred million dollars go every single year. Um, to invest in, in, in farms in Ohio or agricultural businesses in Ohio. And for that, Monday, January 12th, so this coming Monday, is when you would need to um, you know, get ahead of the game and apply at our website, um, ohiotreasurer.gov. You'll, you'll find the same link at Grow Now, but uh, 
on January 12th, it'll be on front and center on our, on our main website. And the, the application deadline then is March 13th, and the funding is April 6th. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.